Good afternoon, grade 12 STEM students. I am April Lara P. Gomez, a graduate at Philippine Normal University, North Luzon, with a bachelor in secondary education, major in biology, with certification in teaching senior high school, your general biology 2 teacher. Before we proceed to our lesson for today, let us first offer a simple prayer. May I ask everyone to please close your eyes and pray. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Heavenly Father, grant me each day the desire to do my best, to grow mentally and morally, as well as physically, to be kind and helpful, to be honest with myself as well as with others, Help me to be a good sport and smile when I lose as well as I win. Teach me the value of true friendship. Help me always to conduct myself so as to bring credit to my school. Amen. For today's lesson, we would talk about taxonomy. Imagine that you need to shop for eggs, milk, and bread in a grocery store for only a few minutes. Today, grocery and big supermarkets have shelves that are categorized into sections such as dairy and fresh produce. You probably would go straight ahead to these sections to get what you need. Imagine buying the same food items in a marketplace where things are sold randomly by different sellers. Where would you begin your task? You would perhaps hop from one store to the next to look for what you need and this system could take a lot of time. Similarly, shopping is like studying biodiversity on Earth. It will be difficult to describe and study organisms if they are not categorized in an organized manner. It would definitely be easier if similar organisms are placed together in one group. Scientists claim that the number of actual species that have not been discovered and identified is close to around 8.7 million with 6.5 million species on land and 2.2 million in oceans. So far, scientists have only identified, named, and classified almost 2 million kinds of organism on Earth. Although this could be a lot already, the UN Convention on Biological Diversity estimated that about 13 million species passively live on Earth while some scientists still believe that Earth is estimated to house about 10 million to 100 million different kinds of organisms. The UN Convention also says that there are some 13 million species of which 1.75 million have been described, such as bacteria with 4,000, protists, Name uh, protists such as algae and protozoa, estimated 80,000 animals, both vertebrates and invertebrates, for 52,000 plus 1,272,000 fungi, which has 72,000, and plants, 270,000. The total described species is. 1,750,000 and the possible total of all species including unknown species could be 14 million. The objectives are at the end of this lesson students should be able to define taxonomy Enumerate different classification system and explain the importance of classifying organisms. They have organized living things into groups with similar characteristics so that they are easier to study. The process of grouping organisms using a multi-level approach 
approach I mean based on their similarities is called classification. Thus, a field of study called taxonomy emerged as the science of naming extant organisms or those that are living today as well as extinct species those that have died and classifying them into logical groups. Taxonomy comes from the root word taxis, which means arrangement. Several scientists work into making sense of life's diversity by devising different systems to classify organisms. Among these are Art Aristotle's classification system, the Linnaean system of classification, and the modern system of classification. First, Aristotle's classification system. One primal system developed was based on harmful and non-harmful organisms or edible and non-edible plants. Sometime during 300 BC, the famous Greek philosopher Aristotle, the father of biology, classified organisms into those with red blood cells and those without. So technically, animals are divided into vertebrates with red blood cell with red blood and those has those who do not have. Those with red blood is or I mean viviparous quadrupeds or land animals, reptiles and amphibians, whales, fishes and birds. On the other hand, without red blood or cephalophods, crustaceans, insects, scorpions, centipedes, shelled animals as well as plant animals known as the Nidorians. He likewise classified organisms as either plants or animals. So this is how he classified plants and animals. Plants is described as those with soft stems, woody stem, and several woody stem, while animals is characterized as air dwellers, water dwellers, and of course, land dwellers. He subdivided plants based on three categories using stem differences. This crude system lasted for over 2,000 years. The simple system of Aristotle's classification was expanded by the Greeks and Romans into the basic units, cats, oaks, and horses. These units began to be called as genera, which is the Latin name for group. In the Middle Ages, these names began to be systematically written down by scholars. The cats were assigned with the name of Helis, horses with Acus, and oaks as Quercus. Before mid 1700s, biologists affixed a series of descriptive terms to the name of the genus if they wanted to refer to a certain kind of organisms within it known as species. These many phrases, starting with the genus, are known as polynomials, which is made up of about 12 or more Latin words strung together. An example of naming a bee using the polynomial system is Apis pubescens, Torre sabriceo, Abdomine fusco, Pedibus posticus glabi, and Untrink margin ciliatus. This polynomial naming system during the Middle Ages persisted until it was replaced about 250 years ago by the binomial system as introduced by Carolus Linnaeus. The Linnaean System of Classification Naturalists replaced Aristotle's classification system because it was unable to provide an adequate coverage of all organisms. His system of assigning polynomials Polynomial names was cumbersome, thus a much simpler system of naming animals 
plants and other organisms was only categorized into two names. In addition, the use of common names for organisms had been confusing and problematic. This, is all this all changed in 1758 when a Swedish doctor and botanist Carolus Sineus published the 10th edition of his book, Systema Naturae. Linnaeus' legacy is his system of assigning a specific name to a species which consists of two components, a genus name such as Homo and a specific name identifier such as Sapiens. The naming system of Linnaeus is called binomial nomenclature where binomial means two names. This scientific naming of organisms has standardized the way organisms are classified and named and is still being used until today. Taxonomy does not only involve naming organisms properly but also categorizing organisms into logical groups. Linnaeus was also was also responsible for proposing the placement of organisms into a seven-level hierarchical system for classifying organisms based on their form and structure. He categorized organisms from the general to most specific level using the seven-level hierarchical system. The levels are kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and finally, a species. So, we have an example here. We have the kingdom Animalia with phylum Chordata, class Mammals, order Primates, family Hominids, genus Homo, and species Homo sapiens. So, this is how Carolus Linnaeus was able to organize and classify organisms in a more vivid description. Lastly, we have modern system of classification. Taxonomy has greatly improved as more and more findings were discovered by scientists in different disciplines to support a more accurate classification. A modern approach to taxonomy is called systematics, which focuses on analyzing the diversity of organisms in the context of their natural relationships. It incorporates taxonomy and phylogenetics. When we say phylogenetics, it is the science that focuses on the evolutionary history of a group of species. Taxonomists and phylogenists work hand in hand to produce a more accurate depiction of the tree of life. In systematics, phylogenists use fossils, homologous structure, embryological similarities, life cycle information, chromosomes, protein composition, and DNA sequences to establish evolutionary ancestry. Since the previous classification system focuses on physical similarities alone, some organisms need to be reclassified due to the accumulation of findings over time. For example, scientists today know that the physical characteristics a species for classification can be unreliable knowing that two species are not always a result of close relationship. Although conver convergent evolution involves two unrelated species that can evolve similar traits, the Linnaean system does not account for this type of evolutionary similarity. Take for example, the giant panda and the red pandas that have similar ears and snots, paws, and bamboo diet. During the Linnaean times, these two species are placed together in one group. But 
Molecular biologists today reclassified them because the giant panda was found to be more closely related to bears than the raccoons due to having a shaggy fur and the ability to walk and climb like a bear. Interestingly, a red panda is more closely, closely related to raccoon than the giant panda, even if they have the name panda as part of their common names. So, that's it for the history for our lesson. So, we'll be having our next lesson titled The Binomial Naming of Organisms next week. That's it for today, class. Thank you for listening.